It's our last example. We're going to see if the series converges or diverges, and if we can show that the series converges, we are going to find the infinite sum, or the series. Uh, well, can we guarantee that it diverges? Can we look at the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n squared plus n? Well, that, that comes out to be 0. Now, that doesn't guarantee that this series is going to converge, but at least it opens the door that it might. Uh, if it did not equal to 0 like those previous two examples, it would be guaranteed that it diverged. Awesome. The theorem at the beginning of the, the, this video we talked about, consider the sequence of partial sums. If the sequence of partial sums, S sub n, that little squiggly mark around it, converges, right, because it's a sequence, uh, converges, then the series converges. And if the sequence of partial sums diverges, uh, then the series diverges. So basically we need an S sub n expression. We need an expression that describes the partial sum of this, um, well, it describes the partial sum. And when we look at this summation notation, we know that first n is going to be equal to 1, and we have 1 over 1 squared plus 1 is equal to 2, and then with the sigma notation we're going to add, well now n is going to be 2, and we have 1 over 2 squared is 4, plus 2 is 6, and then plus 1 over, now n is going to be equal to 3, 3 squared is 9, 9 plus 3 is equal to 12, and it does seem like uh, the denominators are growing. And it kind of maybe ultimately we start sort of basically adding by zero, though, therefore the overall infinite sum, the series, stops growing and we approach some kind of finite or some real value. It doesn't diverge. <coughs> but if I keep this going, I'm just going to go dot 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 plus 1 over n squared plus n and then plus dot 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 and keep going. I need some way of writing a formula for the partial sum so that I can then let n approach infinity and see if that partial sum converges or diverges. And in this format I have no idea how to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, develop this or rewrite this a sub n term into um, basically hopefully a subtraction of two terms and then when we sort of expand the summation notation we get uh, a lot of cancellation. Uh, basically what we're talking about is we're going to develop a type of or a form of telescoping series. Um, well it says this because I've kind of written this as if I've already got the example uh, written out but I think it kind of flows better but we're gonna have some kind of form of b sub 1 minus b sub 2 plus b sub 2 minus b sub 3 plus b sub 3 minus b sub 4 plus and so on and so on and the nth partial sum is going to be given by s sub n is equal to b sub 1 minus b sub n um, plus 1. And a telescoping series will converge if and only if b sub n, the term just before this b sub n plus 1, approaches a finite number as n approaches infinity. If the series converges, its sum is going to be b sub 1 minus the limit as n approaches infinity of b sub n plus 1. Now, the example as we develop this together, we are going to have this cancellation where we have a negative b sub 2 and a positive b sub 2 and a negative b sub 3 and a positive b sub 3 and so on. And I'm going to kind of come in from both the a sub where n is equal to 1 and where um, we have sort of like a n coming in from the right where it's a, a b sub n and b sub n plus 1 and kind of come in from both directions so we can see how these, hopefully these terms cancel out and we can come up with an expression for a partial sum. As you do your homework, though, you know, and I try to come up with these examples, obviously my own examples, I don't want to um, have some kind of, you know, issue with the textbooks, being, uh, companies being unhappy that I'm just basically copying their work and, and so on, but as you do these expansion of these telescoping series, you know, you might not see that these terms right adjacent to each other cancel. You might have um, this minus some term and that exact same term might not show up until maybe you're in your third grouping or your fourth grouping. So you have to really expand out these telescoping series a bit sometimes to see how the numbers, the terms are going to cancel out giving you a final pattern or final formula for S of n. So it's not always going to be just these adjacent terms that cancel when you're doing your homework. Okay, leave that there and hopefully not kick it.
as I walk around. Well, what that means is, you notice there was a parentheses b sub 1 minus b sub 2. We need to have a way, or we're going to take this a sub n term, which is only one term right now, and, you know, sort of break it up into two using partial, our idea to, or techniques of partial fractions. So we're going to, you know, we see that we have a denominator which is factorable, so we're going to rewrite this as the summation of, uh, from n going from 1 to infinity, of 1 over n times n plus 1. Okay, so let's take this a sub n expression out to the side, and or maybe we'll just sneak it over, we'll keep it uh, over here. How do I want to, I want to get all this up here at the same time, um, and have it fit. Yeah, I think maybe we'll do our, we'll kind of just see how much writing I have on this paper and how it's going to fill out the board. Let's, let's come off to the side here and say that we have, or just below, 1 over n times n plus 1. And we have factors in the denominator which are linear factors. So when we sort of break this up by partial, um, by partial fractions, the expression in the numerator has a degree one less than the degree uh, for your denominator, or basically since our two factors are linear, we're just going to have constants in the numerator and say that we have 1 over n times n plus 1 is equal to a over n plus b over n plus 1. Remember those partial fractions, you're undoing the addition of fractions. So there was two fractions, one with a denominator of n and one with a denominator of n plus 1, those two factors having to work through some kind of common uh, denominator process to get to this 1 over n times n plus 1. We're going to multiply this equation by n times n plus 1 and get 1 equals a times, now the n's are going to cancel out, so we have n plus 1, we have b, here the n plus 1's are going to cancel out, and we're just left with n. And I need two fractions that add together to give me this fraction. So this needs to be like an identity where it is always true, regardless of what n is going to be equal to. So we're going to go ahead and see, uh, this isn't a terribly difficult example, um, so we can focus on our learning this knowledge uh, dealing with series. Uh, and come up with some values of n that maybe allow some of these terms to cancel and allow us to easily find out what the other variable is looking for either a or b. So we're going to let n equal 0, and when we do that, we get, well that's going to be 0, so that's gone, and we have 1 is equal to a times n plus 1, or 0 plus 1, which is 1, and so a is going to be equal to 1, and if we let b excuse me, not b, we're trying to find b. If we let n equal negative 1, well now we have 1 is equal to negative 1 plus 1 is equal to 0, so the a cancels out, and we have negative b. So b is equal to negative 1. And now that means that uh, knowing that what a and b are equal to now, we know that 1 over n times n plus 1 can be broken apart to be equal to, or that these are equivalent, uh, a, which is 1 over n, and then b is negative, so I'm going to put that negative out here and say minus, instead of plus, 1 over n plus 1. Great. So now we have this is equal to the summation from n going, starting at 1 and going to infinity of 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. Now let's start the expansion here and see if we can't see all the cancellation that we pointed out in that green board and get to an s sub n expression, a partial sum expression or formula. So if we let n equal 1, we're going to have 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 plus, if we let n equal 2, we're going to get 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3 plus, 
Let n equal 3. We're going to have 1 over 3 plus, minus 1 over 4. And we can see already how the negative 1 half and positive 1 half are going to cancel, and the negative 1 third and the positive 1 third are going to cancel. But what happens when we're at the other end of this partial sum? Um, well, actually, yes, I'm actually miswriting this a little bit because <clears throat> this is going to infinity, but I don't want to... I don't want to kind of do a dot, dot, dot at the end. I want to set up a partial sum formula. My apologies. Okay, so kind of just putting that on the side, trying to determine if this converges or diverges, and considering the sequence of partial sums. Okay, so let's put a orange line that we're talking about something else. This is S of N. Almost messed that up. All right, so going at the other end of this partial sum, we have a plus, dot, 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 plus. Let's go talk about when... We just have, at, we're at the end of this partial sum, and we have, well, well this. This is um, kind of basically letting n be n. We have 1 over n, so this is sort of like our, this is our um, b sub n term. Thinking about the, the language, the notation we have on that green board, the theorem that we uh, are given in the book, the information we're given in the book, and then we have a b sub n plus 1 term here. Okay, now going backwards and looking at when we have n minus 1, we're going to have 1 over n minus 1, and then minus 1 over n minus 1 plus 1. Well, n minus 1 plus 1 is just going to be 1 over n. And I would, you know, work my way in farther from the far side of the right-hand side of our partial sum. Uh, I would continue that pattern if we didn't just have the adjacent terms canceling out. Negative one-half, positive one-half. Negative one-third, positive one-third. This negative one-fourth will cancel with the first term and the next sort of uh, kind of binomial, if you will. And then over here, we have a net minus one over n plus one and then we have a positive 1 over n canceling with a negative 1 over n. And if I did, maybe I can squeeze it in here, plus, if we looked at n minus 2, we would have 1 over n minus 2, and then minus 1 over n minus 2 plus 1, well, my, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, And, oh, see, it's happening again. We have a plus uh, 1 over n minus 1 and a minus 1 over n minus 1. And so taking a sigma notation here, an a sub n term, which is a, you know, single term, we saw when we expanded that, sort of, sort of showing that expansion of the summation notation, the sigma notation, that there wasn't going to be an easy way to come up with a partial sum formula. But by taking that, factoring the denominator, uh, going through the partial uh, fraction process to write that one term as a subtraction of two separate terms. Through the expansion of the partial sum, we see a lot of nice cancellation, and we just get S sub n is equal to 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. Great. Now, if the sequence of partial sum converges, then the series converges, and S is its sum. So we're going to let, we're going to find the um, limit as n approaches infinity. Allow this idea of this partial sum, which always gives us a, you know, a partial sum always gives you a real value. Um, as you let n go to infinity, do you still get a real value for that sum? Well, the limit as n approaches infinity of S sub n is going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. Well, that first term is always going to be 1 minus, we have 1 over infinity plus 1, which of course means that this is going to approach 0. And our final answer is 1, which is a real value. So the limit of our partial sum approaches a real value, thus it converges, and that actually is the sum. This is equal to S. So the 
series or the summation from going from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared plus 1 or plus n is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of s sub n which is s which is 1. So not only have we shown here that the series converges but we also know what the sum of that series is and that's the end of my last example. I'm Mr. True. Bam! Go do your homework.